tonight. Amen. Again, back in the assembly, praise the Lord to just worship, praise him, thank him, and to hear his word. It is the word of God, amen, that have brought us thus far. It's word that brought us out and brought you to whatever point you may be at now to God. Amen. Be the glory for the things he has done and what he is doing. So you hang in there. Amen. That God of the great salvation. Amen. That's been given you. He is your deliverer. He is your help. Amen. He's just as real as your ten fingers and your ten toes. Amen. Away with all that people thinking heaven is just a imagination. No, no, no. Amen. Heaven is real. Thank God it's a place. Amen. For a prepared people. Thank God prepared place for a prepared people. So on tonight, amen, as we go into this Bible study on tonight, amen, let's acknowledge him in prayer. Father, again, we do thank you and we praise you for all that's been said to give your name the glory. You alone are worthy of it all. Look on us tonight as we prepare to teach. Lord, let your word go forth, inspire, build up, causing a going forward in the lives of the hearer. There's so many that are facing so many different adversities and challenges and troubles, but it is your word that gives us the victory. Yes. Amen. It is the faith. It is you, Lord, who is our faith that died on the cross of Calvary that we might live, that oh. we might have power, that we might be more than a conqueror. So on tonight... We're just looking to you, oh God, to have your way within this, this lesson tonight. Send it on forth as a lamp and a light. Show us the way. Continue to lead us down the path that you will see fit for us to go, that you might use us for your glory in this end time move. Take the church higher into the place where we've called her out to be. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all the God's people said amen. Amen. Let's give a great big hand praise tonight. Thank God, Brother Brian. Come on in here. Amen. For what the Lord is doing by his spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. We thank God tonight for you that are here and you that have tuned in. Amen. By the way of internet. Praise the Lord. The Lord is moving by his spirit in so many different ways. My God. Amen. I get it why 10,000 tongues wouldn't be enough. Can you imagine what he's doing for you and me and us in this place? And man, he, then he's everywhere, all over. He plays with me and you can't even comprehend. Amen. And he's doing it for the, all those that dare to trust and believe in him. So our God is mighty and he is doing great things. Praise God. Well, with he's worthy to be praised. Uh, I was, I was, I'm going to share this and we thank God for all this praying and standing in agreement, amen, with us as we go forth in the work and the ministry of the Lord, just to be getting and be, he does so many things, it's hard to keep up sometimes. It's true about him opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out on you and spreading tables right in the presence of the enemy. Hey, it's true. He does things, amen. I thank God. Uh, for him making a way looks like here, amen, in the very near future, uh, future we're going to uh, be, the days coming, we'll be able to get ready to be on, it's an internet radio broadcast right. that we've been reached out to, amen, that they're going to begin to air, so we, we thank God, amen, it's always good to understand everybody don't hate you, Brian, right? amen, everybody don't hate you, amen, God give love to those that love you, Amen. So we thank God for what he's doing. Amen. So we solicit your prayers always. You that are here, you that are listening in by the way of internet. Amen. That audience also keep praying for us as we pray for you. Is that all right? Into the word of God on tonight in Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. We're going to be found there as we have been here for some time. We are just taking our time. Let the Lord have his way with us. Amen. In this series that he's given unto us. Amen. If you're one that have begin to come on and you, amen, just come on within the last week, month or two, amen, follow through on that YouTube and everything is there. Yes. That you can go through, amen, at your convenience and go through, amen, the Bible study classes and um, the, the Friday night services and the Sunday services, amen, that you can join right into that worship. 
amen, and the hearing of the Lord. Amen. This series is learning how to live and walk by faith. The Lord privileged us and blessed us to be able to let down into chapter 11 to bring all of who he is together, looking at the lives of men and women, amen, that started out and they just didn't start out and didn't receive the end. But they started out, they grew, they got to their middles and they got to the end and they went out with the glory. Amen. And that's, amen, what, that's the purpose, what would God call any man or woman, amen. He didn't call us for us not to receive the end of our salvation. Amen. He called us to receive the end what with he saved us for. Amen. And so after saving us, he saved us out of into something. And so that's why we got to find our way like never before. Amen. Learning how to live and walk by his word, his instruction, which we are all coming to find out is, is the faith. Amen. We've heard so many things and I know so many things have been said down through the years and, and, and a lot of it is not bullseye or, or it's been around it. Amen. But faith is a simple thing. Amen. To this degree it's a simple but powerful. Amen. And that you really have to be in him to really see the fullness of God and what we find out when we understand and mature and grow in, grow in him that the faith is the word. Amen. And that faith is the word. And then when you understand who the word is, amen, you understand that word was taken and made flesh, uh, symbolic to Jesus. Amen. He was God in the flesh, reconciling the whole world back unto himself, as the scriptures give us to know. But the way the Lord did it, he fitly framed everything by his word. Amen. And I love how he gave it to those Amen. That wasn't dealing with Webster dictionaries and, and, and Merriam dictionaries. He revealed by the Spirit, amen, who he was. It was John that was given, amen, in, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh. And, the, and that same Word that was made flesh, he began to talk about he was in the world, and the world was made by him. And so we have the record to teach us and show us in Genesis, amen, where he said in the beginning, uh, let there be on the first day called light, he called it earth was without form, amen. That same him, he came. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send the 24 elders. He didn't send nobody. He came himself, amen, to make up the breach. He came himself to pay the price, to be the propitiation for man to get back to him. And the way he did it, man, I fell out over. They made major minors, minor majors, and called themselves building stuff, amen, on everything but Jesus that have caused a bunch of chaos and confusion. So when Paul wrote this, and we have this chapter for the record, Amen. And he said, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. And then he went on to say, if you allow me to drop down in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, look at this, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Him. So all of the record talk about by faith and through faith. So we find here the very first verse said is that that's hoped for. Amen. You have to hear. Yes. He has to speak. And when he speak, you hope thou in it. That's why we're taught to hope thou in God. That's why faith is the word. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. Because when you hold on to it, it comes to pass. Whatever God speaks, whatever he says, he brings to pass. He has the power and the ability to do what he speaks in anyone's life. So everything that was spoken from the old until, amen, the conclusion of the body in the new, he brought to pass. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when we look at this, then he said, without it, if you allow me to do this, without, watch this, without God, amen. without Jesus, yes. hmm, without the word, it is impossible to please him. Yes. For he that cometh, and that's continuation, because we don't know what pleases him until he make us to know. Hmm? Yeah. And so he have to make us to know. And so he said, as you cometh now, he's going to keep revealing, making you to know some things. Because the relationship will begin to be developed. And you will begin to grow. 
from children to young men, amen, to those uh, that have matured and come to the full statue is where we've, we've been called to do, amen. So as we're coming to God, we got to keep on believing. And this is why we're trying to help men and women to let you know that faith is not believing. Amen. You have to believe in the faith. Amen. Because, amen, if you don't believe, nevertheless, the foundation stands sure. If you don't believe, the faith is the faith. But you have to believe in what you hear. You have to believe in the word of God to come out of darkness. You got to believe in the word to be healed. Yes. You got to believe in God. You got to believe in God through Jesus Christ. You got to accept the plan. You got to accept how he came up with it. Amen. He the one that came up with it and didn't ask and counsel with no one. And so since it's his plan, amen, since it's his world, amen, since it's his heaven, since everything, amen, is he is, we might as well fall in line with Almighty God. And so when we look at this, and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. So before we plunge tonight over back over there in Judges, because we're dealing with Gideon, amen, and I'm going to have Sister Tony read that verse that we peel out of chapter 11 with, and I believe it was verse 32 of chapter 11, amen. So when we look at this in verse 6, it says, believe that he is and that he's rewarded them that diligently seek him. Amen. Then the reward, as Sister Nina was bringing out really good as she was testifying, so many, amen, are going after so many other things but him. Amen. But those that's of God seek him. Amen. We seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. We're not worried about those other things because he said they're going to be at it. Amen. He's Father God. He know when to allow. He know the timing of it. So when men that come to know God, they have to be about what he would have them do concerning him. And as we work on that type of relationship, Father God, he's able, amen, to, to manifest, make ways for us and uh, in him is our life. And everything just manifests before us. Is that all right? And so, as, as, so tonight, read for me that scripture before we get over into Judges, the sixth chapter. Can you read verse 32 of Hebrew chapter 11? And what shall I say more? Mm -hmm. I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David also mm -hmm. and Samuel and of the prophets. All right, just stop right there because this word gets so good. I get all type of chills and everything looking at all this and amen we're dealing with Gideon tonight he said well, it would it more and more say what time the time would fail me to tell of Gideon so God is allowing us to go through each one of our brethren that's in the Bible and our sister that's in the Bible we able to examine the scriptures so we can really see that they were men and women just like you and I that had to give a tent to what the Lord told them to do. And because he told them and they gave, and they gave a tent and they obeyed or believed, we find out he was a wonder in their life. And they were men that were used, watch this, to do great things, but if we move God, it would be impossible. So the great things that was done, it was him doing it through them. Amen. And I love the way he did this because if he wouldn't have had told them what to do, they wouldn't have known what to do. If he would not manifest himself unto them, they would have never got to build the relation with, with him and, and come to the fullness uh, of, of that spiritual relationship that they began in the beginning and kept with, with our God. So when we're looking at this, amen, the whole, all of this teaching is to bring to the forefront is not to make Gideon, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, not to make them so big that it smothers who God is. Because the great one that we're supposed to see when we're learning and we're reading, and that's why I admonish men and women, don't read the Bible to get somebody else. Read the Bible to get either to know the Lord or to see yourself. Because if we do that, we find ourselves in a safe place. Amen. And so what we're seeking to do is come into a personal relationship to know the mighty God that have wrought this great miracle in your life that you might realize if he bought you, if he saved you and blessed you. 
No matter what your present is and what's going on, don't give up on God. Amen. Because he's more than able to bring you through whatever junction you in. Somebody say amen. amen. So then let's go over then over here to Judges, the sixth chapter. And if you allow me, Sister Tony, I want you to get a few verses out of uh, starting at verse 33 of Judges chapter 6. This is our brother Gideon, the one that was called, amen, and God sent the prophet down there in the days where it seemed as Israel was just in the hills, in the mountains, and the enemy was triumphing over them, amen. But there was a word of the Lord that came through a prophet and made them mindful of the great God that saved and did mighty things. And there was one that had something going on in his heart, amen. In spite of the condition that he found himself in, stealing behind the, uh, the wine press and, and, and stealing right there, and, and but he down within him, that word was burning. And God watched Gideon, a man that didn't want to settle for what was going on. He knew it had to be more. God, you just didn't leave, bring us here for this to be. And the word that came in encouraged him in such a way. And the Lord saw the yearning in his heart. And he messed around and spoke unto Gideon. And I tell people, anytime you get a hearing, you ain't going to get no hearing just falling all into foolishness. You get a hearing from the Lord when you begin to zoom in and your soul begin to cry out. Amen. He has to draw you to him that he'll start talking to you. Amen. Praise God. Look, you have to consecrate. You have to be diligent to get a hearing from the Lord. Amen. And Gideon got him one. Amen. Praise God. And I mean, he gave him a call and gave him a mission. Praise God. But then he also made him to know as he went on, hey, Gideon, you're not in this by yourself. I'm going to do it through you. You're just going to be the front man. So then if you allow me, we got through where Gideon, last time we was here, God gave instructions. He was to turn down that, uh, that altar and that grove and Gideon, and God told him what to do so he'll be pleased. And Gideon did what God said do, so God was pleased with him. Amen. In such a way that God gave him the goal. Amen. By night. Because they thought he would come by day. But see, God give you ideals. He give you how to do it. Amen. When God gives you how to do it, it's going to be successful. Amen. And so Gideon did. He destroyed the altar of Baal. Amen. And I want to set up, set something here tonight because when that altar, the Lord dealt with me on, amen, you think about the altar, amen, being just, if you allow me, that, that, that raised platform, that things was uh, given unto the Lord or what even people was doing in biblical times, in Old Testament times, unto the little gods. Mm -hmm. or, so in their mind, it was a deity. Amen. It wasn't the God, the great God. It was the God of this world. They just didn't realize it. Amen. But then, amen, God also established how, amen, when he dealt with his, when we read about our brother, he established where they put altars up amen. and made sacrifices. The Lord began to deal with me concerning it. it's really time for men and women to realize, amen, when God bless you and do what he do in your life and give you a new heart and a new mind and put a new spirit, he gives you an a altar. Amen. And the old altar of Baal or the old altar of, of, of worshiping, the things that you didn't know you was worshiping when we was in darkness is destroyed. Amen. Amen. And he gives you a new heart. Yes. Amen. He gives you a new heart to do all of what you do unto him from that new heart. That clean heart, that new heart, that regenerated heart that he puts within you. Amen. As we offer our offerings, as we be a living sacrifice unto him. Amen. And so that altar is God's table, if you allow me. Amen. And what did you think about when he talked, when he gave in the Exodus about the shadow of things to come, how he gave the Ten Commandments on the tablets, on the stone? And he began to set it up like this. A, hey, it's going to come a point. It's not, it's not about, I'm giving you, it's on this rock. But I'm going to write it on the hearts. Yes. Amen. As you go on, it's going to be on the hearts of men and women that, that receive me. They're going, it's, it's from there. I, 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 it, they had it on the stones, but it wasn't in their heart. Amen. But the, what God had in plan, and the great plan, the brilliant plan of salvation, was to take out the stone and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. And it was going to be within that heart, amen, that man was going to render that, that himself as an offering unto the Lord. Amen. 
give himself as a gift. Is that all right? Amen. So when we look at that, amen, Sister Tony, before you read this, amen, can you can you can you hold that spot? And I, and I just want to read this to, into the hearing. I won't even spout on it because it speaks by itself. Jeremiah 31 and 33. You can write that down and just read that into the hearing of the hearers tonight. Jeremiah 31 and 33. Uh huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, 31 and 33. Jeremiah 31 and 33. Since we're talking about that altar symbolic to that heart. Isaiah. Jeremiah 31 33. We are going to go to Isaiah 59 and 21, so they write on each other. Jeremiah 31 and 33. Amen. We just grazing tonight. How about that? Walking through just grazing. Amen. With the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. All right. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law into their into their inward parts mm -hmm. and write it in their hearts. My God. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So see, he's gonna put it in their hearts and write it in their hearts. Again, that expels that dull teaching that many are still in and that are heard for so long that after believers get in saved, they're telling you your heart is desperately wicked, who can know it. That's not accurate. If you're a believer, you don't have a wicked heart no more. Your heart is wicked amen. only, amen, pre-Christ. Amen. Now, they can turn wicked if you turn from the Lord because he withdraw itself. But as you walk it in God, you don't have that old heart that you want to hear. Matter of fact, this heart that God gives you, he engraves his word in. Isaiah 59 and 21. What did, what did the record say? What did the prophet God say through the prophet Isaiah? Because he's the same God. So when he speaks to one man, amen, and he uses another, he's going to use him and say the same thing because it's one spirit. Isaiah 59 and 21. Isaiah 59 and 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord. Mm. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, uh -huh. nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Okay, so watch this. So the Lord said in the beginning that it was talking about his covenant, right? So, you know, I want, to, I want this scripture to be in our hearing for this degree. You know, it's good to hold on to God's covenants, okay? Because as a lot of people are getting tripped up in men and women teaching the word, and they want to say, hey, that came out of your mouth. And they think because it came out your mouth, they make that be a covenant that you said to God. I got news for you. If you're not holding on to his covenant, whatever come out of your mouth don't mount up to a hill of beans. So we have to be in line with the covenant. That, and the covenant is what God speaks and what he said. Uh -huh. So when light come, amen, we can find ourselves being detached from yokes of bondage. Amen. That we find ourselves aligning with thus said the Lord. Amen. And so when we're looking at this tonight, amen, I want you to get for me now the last one I wanted you to touch about this heart was he, Hebrew the 10th chapter, verse 16. Hebrew 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. Uh -huh. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. Right. Yes. So here it is. It goes back. This is the covenant. Mm -hmm. We speak in covenant. So we always, this is a covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. yes. So God don't, God don't change or alter his. And, and as many times people say things and they come out, look, don't find yourself trying to keep your words. Keep his word. Because if we keep his word, he will give us the ability, amen, everything that come out of us, amen, to be uh, in such a way. He'll give us ability to hold fast to what he put within us to live by and to walk by. Is that all right? 
Amen. So let's go tonight uh, real quickly here. And then we're going to say a couple things and then we'll be done over here because God began to give Gideon what to do. He the one told him the altar to go out of and the grove and told him what to do and had, had to come down because how man was worshiping, doing what they're doing after that. And here go Israel, find themselves, amen, lining up with this. And these was God chosen people. Amen. He needed somebody to sit right there he can use to incite and inspire the people again that God was still on the throne in spite of their current situation. Even though they were losing, it seemed like they had been defeated. It wasn't on God. That was on them. Because here go Gideon having a father. He got a grove and a idol right up here and an altar right up in the front yard. Amen. But God gave that son Gideon a mission. Amen. How to bring it on down. Is that all right? Amen. Just get for me. Start at verse 33. Six and 33. Yes, 6 and 33. Judges chapter 6, mm -hmm. verse 33. Then all the Midianites and the Malachites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Oh, man. He got a whole lot of folks upset. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Uh huh. And he blew a trumpet. All right. And Abizar was gathered after him. Stop right there. But the spirit of the Lord, God didn't get nervous because all these people gathered around, got in line to come against Gideon, wanted to kill him. Amen. I mean, they had such hatred and it ran so deep. Amen. That that thing went from tribe to tribe. And they gathered themselves together thinking they was getting ready to try to get at Gideon, but they forgot who was with Gideon, neither did or they didn't know. Amen. But Gideon had the greater one on his side. Amen. And God, my God, came upon Gideon by his spirit. And when he came upon Gideon, the Bible said Gideon blew a trumpet. Amen. And Abazar was gathered after him. These when he blew the trumpet, I like this. Because sometimes, uh, a lot of times, our tension is on the adversary, the evil doing. We got we to gotta know what we're up against. But even when you recognize it, don't let your heart melt. Right. You can't yeah. be subdued by it because you got to realize God is greater than what's coming against you. Yeah. And I love how the Spirit of God came up on him that he didn't fret, neither did he fear. Fear didn't have his way. Yeah. Amen. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't get oppressed. But when the spirit came up on him, he blew a trumpet. And when he blew that trumpet, that noise, that sound, there was a gathering together. Amen. That God calls by his spirit. He began to join some hearts and stir some hearts of some people. Amen. After hearing that trumpet of battle. Amen. And they came together. Amen. Amazon, and they was gathered after him. Now, Amazon was with Gideon. They weren't against him. And then verse 35 said what? And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, uh -huh. who also was gathered after him. See? And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and to Naphtha Naphtal, Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. See, these was coming to meet him. I, want, I, I got to say this like this because my God walking and living my faith, it seems like sometimes you all in there all alone. Amen. Seem like, amen, it's so you're outnumbered. Seem like you're in circle. Amen. And you have no ideal. Amen. That's why God wants the church to come to a level to realize you got brothers and sisters that don't even know your name that's crying and praying for the saints. And because we everywhere, amen, we like the real baby kids. We multiply. God got us everywhere. Amen. And when you got the saints of God on their knees crying out, amen, I mean, woe to those, amen, that seek to fear these little ones and seek to harm and bring evil. My God, you got the people on this earth. You got heaven, the heavenly host. Amen. You got the 24 elders. You got more angels. You got sea fruits. You got champions. You got more than enough. Amen. And then the cap it all off, you got God. Ain't that something? So Gideon was back, God, the spirit came up on him and these people got together, amen, with brother Gideon, amen, by the spirit of the Lord this was done. And verse 36 said, And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand as thou hast said, 
Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. Okay, now what we're going to do to cut down some reading, because I want to get this, I think we we settled this the last time as we went in. God was able to give us something out of this, because so often times somebody would read that, and because Gideon would say, okay, Lord, do this. And they would sit right there and take it like he's doubting, not believing God, and, 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 and all that. See, that's why we got to get the mind of God and see things like he see it, because when we doubt God, the man that doubt don't receive anything. Thing, or the man that don't believe don't receive anything. So as we read the scriptures, we find out when Gideon asked him to do that about keep it dry on one side and make it wet on the other, and he began to ask him to do it again. God did not break him, neither did he rebuke him. Amen. He was giving Gideon now that you might know I'm with you. See, we have to get to a point in our beginnings as we go. God got us. He, he know how to put us in places, and you can talk to God. I mean, from your heart. God don't get upset, amen, when you talk to God with the right attitude and the right spirit, amen. He wants a relationship. What good, how can you develop a relationship if we can't communicate? And so what God, what Gideon was doing with God was talking with God. Okay, you said you're going to do this. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not drawing back, but I need a little something. And many times people, the church, we get to a point, every man and woman, we need a little bit more than what we had from the get-go that we can get further. We need a little bit more assurance, a little bit more confidence. We got to increase. And I ain't no, I ain't no other way to do it than to talk to your God in the midst of what you're going through. Because God don't get upset like many times we're taught in the churches. Amen. I mean, oh, wait, don't ask the question. Just that. Look, if you're doing it in the right attitude, right disposition, no, -uh, God don't upbraid you. Amen. He will give, do, give you what's needed for the task. Somebody say amen. So Gideon did this, and the Lord, amen, gave Gideon his request. Now drop down for me over here, because this is where Gideon is preparing for the battle. Amen. And I want to pick out some things here as we, as we get ready to close out on Gideon. Uh, as this battle that he began to prepare Gideon for. Gideon, most scholars would say Gideon was preparing for battle. Amen. But I, when you got a spiritual enlightenment, is God, amen, was preparing Gideon on how the battle was going to be won. Because when God was going to do this, he wanted his people that have uh, have lost their confidence, have went into captivity, they were in defeat, amen, to realize that he's still who they heard he was. And he was using a vessel that got to know him, that was building a relationship with, that he can speak through to get the attention of a people, amen, seem like that couldn't keep their attention on Almighty God. And this, this is what's happening in days and times like this. If you're one of the ones that seem to be is going through tough times, amen. Look, God don't put no more on you than you can bear. It's for you to now begin to realize God is must be ready to use you for a purpose, amen. And so you got to change your attitude and uplift your spirit, put a smile on your face and dry your tears because God got something up his sleeve for you that he want to show himself strong in you, amen, on his behalf. So he chosen you for such a time as this. And so when we look at verse chapter 7, and amen, as it, as it goes, I want you to begin to read at, um, let's do what the Lord said, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon. Uh-huh, see, it's always in the Lord said, because I'm learning this. You go with what the Lord said, not the Pope, not the bishop. If the Lord had said, go with what the Lord said. Right. If he's speaking what the Lord said, go with what the Lord said. It's uh, any man, woman, boy, girl that's been called, look at here. If they're talking and they're preaching, this should be what the Lord said. None of us have our own word that can keep you, that can preserve you, that can give you joy. It's what the Lord said. And when you go with what the Lord said, you will find success, peace, joy, and strength. Amen. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Now he got 32,000 people down. Uh -huh. Remember he blew that trumpet and it came from everywhere. 
Amen. He blew that trumpet. They got inspired. Some of them came and, and God gonna help us as we go through this. Some of them came and I mean to God they came and good intention coming. Amen. But it, 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 all together God was seeing something within a lot of them. Maybe they were trying to be nosy. Maybe they were just trying to come in to be a part. I mean I don't know what it was but God saw amen and he saw out of that 32,000 some things and he began to let Gideon know right off the rip hey Gideon is 32 you got but you got a little too many come on keep reading least Israel vaunt themselves against me look at here saying I, my own hands have saved me the, at the conclusion of this mm. I don't want nobody thinking it was because of you mm, I don't want nobody thinking it was your strength what you done yes. I want men to see me that's the challenge that the Lord gave me. That's the, that's the mission he gave me. Sister Anderson and preaching and teaching and pastoring. Amen. Look at here. Let every message that you teach and preach at the end of it, folks, to see him. Amen. Let it be about him. Don't, don't let him see you. Let him see him. Because it's all about when he use people, when he do great things, God won't own the glory. And when we really develop it and fall in love with him, you want him to get all the glory. Amen. You're not trying to take no credit for nothing. All I did was obey. He came up with the plan. He told me what to do. He told me, amen, how to go here. He told me to tear that down. He told me to do this. As long as you're doing what he said, no matter what come against you, my God, if it come against you, as though it come against you, that's really coming against him. And so when we're looking at this, amen, he said, lest they vaunt themselves against me, saying my own hand has saved oh, me. I've got lifted up and full of pride. Look, I got to let every believer know, ain't, you ain't do what yes. been done in your life. God done it. Yes. Amen. You ain't got to the point you got to in your life because of you, your ability, your wisdom, your strength. The wisdom you got it, if you got wisdom, it comes from God. Amen. Amen. You got strength, that's his strength. If you got peace, it's his peace. If you have victory, it's his victory. If you got liberty, he gave you liberty. At the end of the day, everything that I have and you have, we have because of him. Amen. I know a lot of times that sounds weird because that ain't how people perceive themselves. That's why we. That's why the church has got too high. Amen. And preachers are too high. Amen. You don't have righteousness. If you got righteousness, God sees himself. He see the righteousness of him. He see Jesus. When he's looking at his people, he don't see your undone ways. He see his son. Yeah. And that's why he told us to get in him. I wanted to bring this out because Israel got away and they got away. They got out of the way of God, found themselves in trouble because they forgot God. Amen. And went a horn after other gods. But that's not what he saved us to do. Because there was a mission with him saving us. So he said, let's say in my own hand, have saved me. Keep reading. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying. Now, hold on, Sister Tony. Did y'all see this? He's still telling Gideon what to do. Mm -hmm. Faith come by hearing. Yes. If he don't tell Gideon this, he don't know what to do. That's true. He, he don't know what to do. He don't know how to act. He don't, he don't know how to do none of this. And so, and, and I want to bring this out because as we get ready to close, getting at this time have got into a place that God can commune with, that he know God is trusting him. Amen. Empowered him, choosing him as an ambassador to trust that he's not going to take his word and make it all about Gideon. Amen. And so Gideon is in a good place. He's in a low place with God. And God is talking with him, his plan. Talking with him, making him to know. You know, that's how he did with Moses. You, know, you, you, you have to develop your relationship to get a hearing this way. And so we see Gideon progressively, amen, progressing in the spirit that God is giving him what to do. Amen. Now you go to the you go and proclaim in the ears of the people, saying. Whosoever is fearful and afraid, mm -hmm. let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. Mm -hmm. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Now you know now that I read it, you won't never hear Gideon coming back and say, Hey Lord, we got thirty-two, man, right? you now ten, you sure? That's because when Gideon was fully persuaded in whom he was believing. 
Amen. God is manifesting and making himself known unto Gideon. God looked out and saw 32,000. He said, nah, uh too many. Amen. They'll mark themselves. And so he said, I need you to speak. I, I got a word for you to speak into the congregation, into their ears. I'm going to release a lot of them because a lot of them got a lot of fear. Amen. And when Gideon went and obeyed God, the Bible said that subtracted from that 32, 22,000 and said, hey, well, I'm going to respectively dismiss myself because I do have a, 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 a little fear and I'm kind of afraid. Amen. And that's what God don't want us to have. No fear. And neither we should we be afraid. When we trust in God, you're not trusting in your ability. You trust it in him. Amen. By God. Amen. And we can never go wrong. So he showed Gideon the, those that was fearful and afraid. And verse 4 said. And the Lord said unto Gideon, mm -hmm. the people are yet too many. Lord, he's getting tested in trying. See, when the Lord is talking to you, it's a test to you. It's a test to the preacher. It's a test to the servant. Amen. That he's speaking. That Because God just rolled out, give you some too. That's why the preacher got to stay hungry. If the preacher don't stay hungry, it's impossible for the congregation to be hungry. If you don't keep yearning and wanting more, my God, amen, I found out people got a tendency to take on the spirit. That's just like in the natural, amen, uh, uh, you can go one of these coaches, if the coach got a fiery spirit, if he's active, amen, the, the players tend to have it. If he's dry as a powder house and no expectation, not looking for God to do nothing, I found out people are the same way, amen, but my God. God, look what he told Gideon. Amen. He said, look now, uh, there, there's yet too many. Yet too many. And you don't hear no talk back, push back from Gideon. Keep reading. Bring them down unto the water. Mm -hmm. And I will try them for thee there. Okay. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. Uh -huh. And of whomever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. So Gideon didn't have any say so in this. This was God's instruction. This was God was going to do. Hey, Gideon, if I do this, if I say that, that's the one you take, that's the one you don't take. Amen. You don't even have no say in this matter. The whole time Gideon is just saying, yes, Lord. Amen. Your wish is my command. Whatever you say in his heart, he was ready to just obey God. And I love this because the Lord said, I'm going to take you to the water. I want you to watch this. That 10,000, amen. I want, you to, I want you to watch how they go at it. Amen. I want to see who's thirsty. Yes. Hmm. And, and this is this what the Lord is doing. Amen. He's looking for people in this. Side. That's why I can really see the last is going to be first. And the first one will be last. Because at the end of the day, look at this. Amen. You got to be thirsty for God. You have to want more of God. I really appreciate God. And I love him for what he's done. Because, I mean, you can't get content on salvation and deliverance. Because if you just, we thank God for salvation and deliverance because it's the beginning of great things. But it's just the beginning. You got a long way to go after you get saved and delivered. You got to get into the promised land. But look how he's doing with Gideon, this 10,000, so he can show Gideon the ones to take. Amen. Because what I'm going to show you over here when you get over there. Amen. So when you see it and I say to you, amen, them the ones you take with you because it's by that. Amen. I'm going to, when I said the victory to you, I'm going by one man. I'm going to give it because I saw your heart and I prepared the hearts of others to join on in. So God was still breaking it down. Keep reading, Sister Tony. So he brought down the people unto the water. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lap lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. By himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Do the same way with them. I want you to let it see. I want, I want, to, I want you to make a divide. So you can see the ones that's lapping water like a dog and them that got on their knees. And I mean, they went at the water that way. Now, just in that alone, Gideon, God is giving Gideon to really see, amen. Uh, and he's seeking to show the type of spirit up that was among even the 10,000. My fearful and afraid already got dismissed. Then you got now, let's see who's thirsty. Amen. Let's see who really wants it. I'm, God is watching how they're doing it. So, what he ended there, he said, those that will lap water like a what? That as a dog lap. Him, you set them to the side, and the one that bow down, 
you know, get on his knees and get his, you know, then he's going to drink too. So read for me in verse 6. And the number of them that laughed, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that left will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go every man unto his place. Uh -huh. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets. And he, set, he, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent. And retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the battle. So here go God. All these folks that was encamped about them, the Midianites, they said it was like grasshoppers. You couldn't even number it. It looked at like well, you, I mean, the sands of the sea, the Bible said. And then here go God said, now nah, nah, break this 10,000 down. I want the ones, I just want 300 that's lapping water like a dog. I mean, they, you got to remember something. If they didn't use their hands, they just got down. And I mean, to do that right there, you had to get down on that ground. It wasn't about how, what you had on, what you got messed up. They had to be caught up in whole. We going to get the victory. I mean, they weren't thinking about themselves. They thinking about what that trumpet, that blowing of that trumpet. When Gideon got them together, God's going to give us the victory. Uh, the days is over with us running from these folks hiding in these rocks. This God that we miss up, so that it was 300 out of 10,000, or if you allow me, 300 out of 32,000, amen, that God can really take and use for his glory. Now, somebody else would say, look at them, how they do. They just ain't got no manners, and they just, uh, they just, oh, they, I mean, that ain't God got them doing that. I mean, that's how a lot of people that ain't in God, when you get in God, that's how they're going to treat you, amen, because they so program, programized and, and, and traditionalized and customized. And, and, and after you get through doing it the way the Lord say do it and how he give you to do it because they had a place that you're not. They mess around and look at you like you off. But look what God chose. He chose the ones that laugh water like a dog and the intelligent, the proper ones and those that were sitting right there. This is how you do it. I mean, it, to me, it sounds like what's going on today. Amen. You know, people got their way of doing things. They got their way of serving God. We talk about that altar. But when you go higher, when you start getting into yearning for more of God, and you say, all right, that's good. That was good for back then. But Lord, I mean, it got to be more to this. It got to be more than just coming together. It got to be more than just a choir singing. It's got to be more than just watching people do it. I want to be involved. I want to get to know you. And this is what God is doing by his spirit. That 300, amen, had their mind on the thing that they heard of God. Amen. Gideon was letting them know and somebody even eventually ended up having a dream. Amen. Concerning Gideon, I mean, and this battle that inspired the heart of Gideon, amen, in, in such a way, amen. Let, let me read this. This will bless your heart. I'm going to get ready to be done tonight. Let me read this. Amen. Let me let me let me drop down to the 13th verse. Let me read this. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of the Midian <laughs> and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell yes. and overturned it that the tent lay alone. And this fellow answered and said, this is nothing else. Save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand have God delivered Midian in all the hopes. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel. I, I mean to tell you, I can see him. He was inspired. He was ready and said, Arise, for the Lord have delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Gideon was doing this thing for the Lord and his people. He wasn't trying to be big wig. He just wanted to see God be God. He just realized that God, I know you love these people even though they've been getting defeated. My God, I mean Gideon got inspired in the Bible and he divided the 300 men into three companies and he put a trumpet 
in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. Amen. He was an example of this thing, and they followed in by God. One spirit, amen, that God used in one, he also got on the others to get in. Amen. And be as, as be as, and be in this thing together with Brother Gideon. This blessed my heart because they put pictures in there, right? And lamps. And I, I mean, I share something with you. Amen. There's a prayer warrior, amen, that's been praying and standing before the Lord. And, and, and the Lord allowed her to hear some things in the spirit and seeking God. And she heard some breaking going on. I mean to tell you what the Lord, this same God. That moved in days gone and past. He's still the same. Amen. He sees the host of enemies. That I mean, it could be sickness. It could be look. It could be loved ones. It can be. It could be the secular. It could be those on your job. Whatever you encounter in your life. Amen. If you can just keep on learning how to hold on to His word. Look, praise him, even though they're doing it. I mean, just give him the glory. Let the Lord know, look, Lord, I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to stay up all night thinking about it. I'm not even going to worry about it. Here it go. I'm going to sleep. That's your job, God. You're my father. You don't sleep. You don't slumber. You don't want me up all night doing all this when you know the way the enemy take. I mean, get into that secret place, that safe place, where you can find yourself getting wrapped up, smothered with Jesus. And as you do so, God got a way of a call and everything that's coming against you just to get right in place for him to take it all out. I got to tell you tonight, as he was always on the people of God's side, if we find ourselves obeying and going with God, he's on your side, my side, my God, you stand still, stay sweet, stand still, study yourself, make sure you're in the will and way of God, and God will fight every last one of your battles. Amen. He'll fight all your battles for you. you there'll be no need for you to do it. Amen. Because God knows how. And all he's looking for his people to do in the midst of what you're going through. He'll take chaos. He'll take confusion to push you closer to him. Amen. He'll, it, to, to enjoy you even more. So enjoy the moment that you're in. Waiting upon the Lord for his mighty hand to be revealed. Now, what ends up happening, what ends up happening, Gideon went up in this thing and God gave them the victory. In such a way, after Gideon, amen, the Lord did this through Gideon. And he even began to pursue the kings of all these particular nations. Because at the end of the day, those that was trying to escape, Gideon even went after them. That was the spirit of the Lord because he knows the enemy's seat. And one thing about this is for every child of God to realize something. You don't have to fear because he didn't give us that spirit of fear. Neither do you have to fret. What we learn in learning from Gideon, because he obeyed God, he obeyed the faith. God gave him the instructions. He did just like his brother before him. Noah, he gave Noah what to do, so Noah did it. Noah didn't come up with the plan for the art. God did it. It was by faith. He gave them what to do. They obeyed it. And I'm going to tell you the heart of all this. And you'll get a chance to read this at a time as you plunge into this with Gideon. As the Lord did it, and in Gideon days, amen, the people was like this. Whew. They saw Gideon in a such a way, we want you to be over us, and we want your children to be over us. Gideon said, look, now, uh you the Lord's people. Because he wasn't doing it for that matter. He just did it as unto the Lord. The heart of that that God gives a leader's people is never a heart to think he owned the people because you don't. Amen. You didn't pay the price. Amen. They don't belong to you. Amen. And at the end of the day, if you allow me, you a sheep too. If you a shepherd, amen. If you a bishop, if you a pastor, if you a apostle, you a sheep too. 
Amen. At the end of the day, he is the good shepherd. But I love that about him. And then there's something that often to be learned by Gideon because as he went on, uh, later on in life, he ended up having a child. He had so many children by one. And he ended up having a child by something that he shouldn't have had. And the devil used that child at, at the end of the day. And he, kill, and he killed all his children. So when we look at this, we can learn from our brethren's lives. And, I, and I'm bringing it out like this because there's some teaching that's going to come down. We got to watch what we, we got to watch what you hooked up to. And you got to watch what you try to hook up to. And let God be the deliverer. Let's give God a great big hand praise tonight. Amen. For the teaching of the word of God. Amen. Thank God for our brethren that showed us how. Amen. To yield and to obey God that we, the people of God, might experience the same victory. Amen. And might experience the same success that God done for one. He's no respect the person. He'll do it for you too. So, Lord, we thank you tonight for this service. We thank you for the teaching. We thank you for allowing us to hear it tonight to encourage us even the more. And even as so you were in their lives, you so to be in our lives. Help us, oh God, to never stop yearning and longing for you and to develop this personal relationship that we will come to know you as our God. Just as you was the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, we realize we must know you also as they had got to know you and that you're available for that. That's your, that's your longing. That's what you desire for your people to really get to know you that you can use us in the midst of times like these that this message penetrate and cause Zion to come high within thee. Yes. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name and all of God's people said amen. amen. Look, amen. You that an internet, you go with God, he'll go with you. God bless you and keep you as I pray. Amen. We